Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of One Room Schoolhouse. My name is Tim. My name is Elijah. Danielle. Still, we are all still here and we are going through an American Hero series and hopefully you've seen some of the early videos. The hero of the day today is someone that most people have never heard of, but someone who received a pretty significant award in American history. Danielle, who is this? Yeah, so today we're talking about the Medal of Honor recipient, Christian Fleetwood. Now, Christian Fleetwood is one of several black Americans who were soldiers in the Civil War who received the Medal of Honor specifically for protecting the American flag. Now, Elijah, let's already start with that thought because the modern perception that so often Americans are given of the American flag is, right, the American flag is, that's a flag of abuse and injustice and intolerance and police brutality. If you go back to, like, the Civil War era, if you go back to when there was major civil rights issues in America, it, it's quite noted that the black patriots that fought in some of these battles, they were always fighting on the side of the American flag, and they recognized the American flag had a different set of values than what is being portrayed as today. That's exactly right. And so when we look at the values of America, right, a lot of people will stare at the flag and say, well, that was guaranteed for white people, right? That wasn't for people like me or half of my family. However, what is pertinent to understand is a lot of these black heroes understood that the promise inside of the, of the Constitution and specifically the Declaration of Independence were promises yet to come to fruition for those people. And they understood that if they continued the good fight, that they would preserve and, and be able to give freedom not only unto themselves, but to their children. And so when we look at heroes like Christian Abraham Fleetwood, they, he absolutely had that multi-generational perspective. And, and it was super easy, right? When, when you're looking at the Civil War and one side is fighting, arguably defending slavery in right. what they're doing, right? When you look at, at their, uh, the, the different declaration of causes, right? As they're explaining their secession documents and, and all their declaration of causes, they're saying, we're separating because of slavery. Because today, there's a lot of people that say, well, states' rights. And it's fair that not everybody in the South was in favor of slavery, right? Right. I mean, you can go through even like a Robert E. Lee, who when he civil war is unfolding, Lincoln recruits him and he's like, man, if there's going to be a war against Virginia, I can't lead a military that's right. going to kill my family and friends. But when he gets to Virginia in the Confederacy, he actually makes a this motion saying, hey, guys, we should end slavery because then the Union will have no moral high ground against us. There's there's more to that story than what a lot of people realize. Right. And it's easy to simplify and say, hey, all Confederates, racist, evil, villainous, whatever, all Union good. Well, again, we know it's not entirely the case. Mm -hmm. However, if you're looking at the war in general and slavery being the prominent issue mm -hmm. in the Civil War, and there's one flag fighting for slavery and one flag fighting against slavery, it's a pretty easy dichotomy to see which side to end on. And it's why it's even interesting, you know, these, these Nike tennis shoes that are in front of us. Absolutely. And so I'm sure a lot of our viewers are wondering how in the world, I mean, we're in a vault with artifacts from hundreds and some over a thousand years ago. And here we have what appears to be a brand new pair of Nikes in front of us. Well, these Nikes were actually the same pair of shoes that were canceled by San Francisco 49ers former quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. And the reason why he had these pair of shoes canceled, uh, canceled rather, is while he was Nike's ambassador, he looked at the flag on the back of them, the Betsy Ross flag, and thought, you know, that flag, what does it stand for? It stands for racism. It stands for brutality. It stands for, for a nation that has only oppressed its black individuals and never exalted or lifted them up. And so this is why the story of Christian Abraham Fleetwood is so powerful yeah. because it clearly displays a different narrative and perspective than the one held by what would be what this man envisioned, right. you know, right. a man who made millions of dollars in the NFL and is the stardom of children nationwide. Right. And talking yeah. about being oppressed. Yeah. Talk about right. being oppressed. In an era when the civil rights laws have been passed, there is no slavery, as opposed to a guy who was born in the era of slavery. Now, it, it, it's worth right. noting, let's go back to Christian Fleetwood. Right. As we unfold his story, he was an individual born in the North, mm -hmm. Where slavery born had already been, freedom. yeah, right. slavery had already been ended in those northern states right. at this time, and so he's born into freedom. So his family worked for a merchant, and the merchant had a son, 
And so Christian and the son grew up together. Christian had the opportunity to be educated right. in the merchant's home. Merchant has an incredible library. And Christian has a really, really solid education. Uh, ends up going to university, gets a good training university. And the university has since been named the Lincoln University in the Civil War, honoring Abraham Lincoln. But he then goes back home. And again, we're talking about a free black man in the northern colonies of America, the northern states. When Lincoln does the Emancipation Proclamation, that's when he calls for colored troops to come to America. I'm not being offensive, right? This was the actual terminology, but it was they were known as the U.S. colored troops. And so he decides to enlist. And it's worth noting at this He's point. He's five foot four. I just want to throw that out there. Right. That's... Little guy. That's the one. That, that's guy. what's worth noting. Not a heart. Right? <laughs> the, now, we have some friends in the military. We have a very good friend who's a little under five four, and he was a special force guy. Yeah. And so... Right, just because you're a little shorter doesn't mean you can't kill lots of people really well. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Yeah. Sure. With that being said, <laughs> he's a little target. <laughs> <laughs> escapes better dodging through bullets, right? But he he signs up, and he's one of many black individuals to sign up in the Union Army. And as the Civil War unfolds, we mentioned he's one of the guys who wins the Medal of Honor for protecting the American flag. There's actually another story or two we will cover this month telling some of those stories. His is quite unique because as the battle unfolds, there are people being killed all around because it's one of the things that happens as the battle progresses or as the war progresses, you, you get into trench warfare, then you have sieges, and some of these sieges last for months and months trench and months. Trench warfare going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And so where he is, this is the siege of Petersburg and Richmond. And during the siege, it, it was 80,000 casualties. Yeah. That's an enormous number of people. How long did this fight last? You're, we're talking now in the months, the 10, 11 months is wow. what the siege is. And during this time frame, this is where he's part of a battle where people are being killed. And in the midst of gunfire, the guy who had the American flag got shot. And at this time, generally speaking, you followed the flag. So the person leading the charge, they had the flag. And also there were- a huge honor, right? Big time. There were also flags for your unit. And so, right, you're able to know where is my company, where's my unit, and I'm following the flag. And the guy who's holding the flag gets shot. And this is when Christian Fleetwood steps up. And actually, even the Medal of Honor uh, award he receives Tell some of the story. Christian told some of the story too. Elijah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I have that up here. So it says, Our regiment lined up for the charge with 11 officers and 350 enlisted men. Alfred B. Hilton of Company H went down, shot through the leg. As he fell, he held up the two flags and shouted, Boys, save the colors. Before they could touch the ground, I seized the American flag. I rallied the survivors around the flag, rounding up at first 85 men and three commissioned officers. Now, when we read that story, it's incredible the amount of valor that he displayed in retrieving the flag and continuing towards the enemy, right. rallying so many of his troops. But we also have to highlight, what was the importance of keeping the flag in the air, right? It's not just a, a, a symbol of morale, uh, of morale, rather, for the troops. If, you, if the flag is not in the air, if it is not waving its colors, the troops don't know right. where they are. Right. They don't know where they're supposed to be going. But it also makes you a greater target. So even though the man was only 5'4", right. when he stood on top of his bravery, he was a lot taller. Well, also worth but, noting, yeah. Once <laughs> he was he, shot at. Yeah, once he grabs the flag, because <laughs> even his account of what led to him getting the medal on in the story, uh -huh. once he grabbed the flag, as you mentioned, he was a target. Mm -hmm. he was. And, and he talks about, like, it's almost like reminds me of a George Washington, right? Where he's kind of bulletproof in this moment sure. right. where he's being shot at. Kind of like a God's providence putting his hand over right. him, right? Right, right. And, and specifically over his body, not yeah. as much as clothes, yeah. his boots. Because he literally is like, when I was being shot at, there was a bullet that went and it, it cut my trousers and my boot and my sock. Didn't touch my skin. Now, Didn't break his skin. <laughs> if a bullet's cutting your sock, yeah. right, and you're booting your trousers and doesn't touch you, the, the genuinely miracle right. is what you are talking about. And going back, Elijah, to your point, his priority was not just their winning the battle, not just his survival, it's upholding the flag, and not just the flag of the unit, the American flag, because specifically... The unit flag, and he did uphold both. He grabbed both. He grabbed the American flag first and his unit flag. Right. But your unit flag can still give direction of where to go. But the American flag is the flag you're fighting for. Mm -hmm. And so he kept both of them in the air while he is being now the primary target for what's right. going on. So, so he actually 
uh, stayed in the war, he fought the rest of the war, survived, and so whenever he got out, he became, he went to Washington, D.C., he held tons of different positions there, uh, one of which was in the War Department. He established a high school for cadets uh, going to the military, and he actually trained people who would grow up to be in World War I, wow. and they even entered in as officers. Uh, so, so he did all this. He was an incredible musician, and but I just want to mention uh, he had a lecture. So it says that uh, he had a historical lecture on black soldiers in the American military. And I just want to read this quote because it's so profound. He says, in every war so far known in this country, the first blood, and in some cases the last also, has been shed by the faithful Negro. So that's so profound. I mean, we talk about people who have died, fought and died in the war. I mean, even in the American Revolution, yeah, right? The first totally. bloodshed. Yeah, as he makes the argument, right, the first blood, sometimes the last blood. But yeah, just in the American Revolution, right. John Adams says the American Revolution started with the first shot that was heard, not around the world, but the first shot from King Street, the massacre of King Street. Well, the Boston Massacre, that was Crispus Attucks. Right. So you have a black man. The American Revolution ends, one of the heroes we talked about earlier in this series, yeah. James Armistead. Yeah. Literally, the revolution Not began. Not through his blood, but through his intelligence, right? But the contributions of right. black Americans. Right. And this is what Christian Fleetwood points out that today so many people have forgotten. And this is part of the reason we want to do this series to help remember some of these people, who they are, what they did, their contributions. And we're only giving you a very brief glimpse into their story. There's so much more. To find out more, you always can go to wallbuilders.com. We have a lot of resources. You can get this whole series we're doing. You can get it on paper. There's footnotes in it. So you can learn more of their story. And as always, you can tune in for the next episode of One Room Schoolhouse.